Have you ever run Lead Code's performance evaluation and thought, wow, I'm in the top 86% of submissions. I'm a genius. Well, I'm here to give you the cold, hard truth. It's about to be as devastating as learning that the tooth fairy isn't real. Lead Code metrics are bogus. They're baloney. They might as well just be a random number generator. And I'm not just talking about the submissions that apparently completed in zero milliseconds or took zero kilobytes of storage. I mean, you're telling me that someone is able to detect whether or not any number was a palindrome in zero milliseconds or using zero kilobytes of space? Well, recently a buddy of mine actually ran some tests on one of these uh, Likud problems, specifically the palindrome number one. Uh, and this problem just asks you to detect, like given any number, whether or not it's a palindrome. The idea was to create some solutions for palindrome number and then put them into Likud, get their you know performance metrics, then run those same exact solutions in a virtual machine and run our own metric analysis on them. And then we can rank both sets of solutions uh, on space complexity and on runtime. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. As always, a link to the Git repository holding these experiments and the code for them will be provided in the description below. If you wanna try them out yourself or maybe you want to run your own experiments, feel free to take a look at that code and do it. All right, first I wanna come up with my own solution here just to compare it against the other ones that are already in the repository. So I'm thinking for this solution just to make it different from the others, I'll have like a stupid check for how long the number is by just like writing a bunch of if statements. And then once I have that, I can use it to just loop halfway across the number and do some arithmetic to check like the ith digit from the n minus ith digit. And if they're equal, or if they're ever not equal, then we know it's not a palindrome. Now I expect this solution to be fairly fast. It only has to make like one half pass across the integer and it should be able to detect the length of the integer pretty quickly, at least not any slower than using some sort of like division. All right, let's go ahead and run this baby. And his name is John C. <laughs> 96%. Wow, well, I always knew I was a genius. Let me just quickly remove this comment here. Shouldn't uh, have any effect, I imagine. 14%? Well, that's gotta be a fluke. I'll, ju I'll just rerun the same exact code. Let's remove this redundant absolute values check. I guess I should have given a little spoiler alert here since I can, I think we can tell where this is going. All right, there might be some slight inconsistencies with lead codes algorithm performance analysis, but I'm sure it's nothing we can't just overlook, right? Oh. Uh-huh. Serious question though, how do they even manage to vary this much? I mean, like, why am I experiencing a 500% increase in my runtime because I removed a comment? Do they just alternate between running your code on 17 GPUs and just one potato? Work around this instead of using the actual numbers that they report, let's just rank them according to their best performance and then we'll compare that to the values that we get using this repository here and the like metric analysis in C++ uh, in a virtual machine. This will tell us whether or not leak code is just inconsistent or if it actually fails to be able to accurately determine the ranking of algorithms. Okay, I updated the test runner with my solution and now let's run the tests and look at the data. Before I run the tests, I'm just gonna go over one or two of the solutions here. If you wanna see all of them, again, they're in the Git repository. So the first solution I have here is the char array solution. In this one, we're basically just going to create a character array as the name suggests and loop over our number and grab every single integer and put it in that character array. And then we'll loop over half of the array and compare the dereference values of the front and the back of the array uh, until we either find an unequal pair, meaning it's not a palindrome, or we've looped across like half of the array from both directions, in which case we know it must be a palindrome when we return true. The other solution I wanna point out is the string solution. So in this one, instead of using a character array, we're just going to parse this directly to a string and then loop over it much in the same way. The reason I wanna point this out is because as it's written in the repository, a string solution should probably take more memory than the character array solution, since a string probably tracks more variables than just like the character array itself. 
The next two solutions I want to point out are the build halves solutions. There is a like a regular one and a fast build halves solution. For the regular one, we're first going to have to figure out how many digits this number has. And once we have that, we can traverse over half of the number from left to right and build kind of a reversed version of the first half of the number. Then we can loop over it again, but this time the back half and build that out. So once we have that, now we have two integers, the reversed front and the back, and then we can just do integer comparison and find out if it's a palindrome or not. Now in the smarter build half solution, instead of reversing the front half, instead we can just reverse the back half. And while we're doing that, we'll also build out the front half out of necessity. Now once we have that reversed back half and the front half, once again we can just do integer comparison to determine whether or not we have a palindrome. Now since this one only makes one pass over the integer, we expect that this should be better performing than the worse build half solutions that requires you to do two passes. Okay, so I'm going to run this now and I'll aggregate all the results and we can take a look. So now let's take a look at how the results compare between running it on the virtual machine and running it in leak code. So with the virtual machine, the best solution was the fast build have solution, which is expected. It only makes one half pass across the entire integer, so it should be very efficient. Next was the string solution, followed by my arithmetic solution, uh, and so forth. We see that build halves is slower than the fast build halves solution, and that the char array is slower than the string solution. So all of that I think makes makes logical sense. However, for lead code, it put my arithmetic solution first. Like I appreciate that, but unfortunately that probably isn't true. But giving it the benefit of the doubt, we can continue down the line. Next we see build halves uh, was the second best performer. And if we scan down the chart, we see fast build halves third from the bottom. Now we know immediately this is just not true, right? There's no way that the fast build halves solution is slower than build halves. It only makes one half pass across the entire integer while build halves has to make two. It just doesn't make any sense. So uh, this is actually divergent from what we would expect. And I think the virtual machine is clearly more accurate in this case. Now this is a little bit concerning because we can see that leak code is clearly reporting that certain algorithms are faster than others when not only can we see that that doesn't make sense from the perspective of running it ourselves in our own environment, but also just logically thinking about it, like for example, with build halves being faster than the fast build have solution, uh, clearly leak code isn't handling these properly or isn't really measuring them in an accurate manner. Maybe things will be different though if we take a look at the memory analysis. Now in both the virtual machine and in leak code, uh, it was reported that the fast build have solution performed the best in terms of memory, which makes sense since it doesn't do any additional allocations. However, for the leak code analysis, the build have solution was reported to have been worse than the string solution. That doesn't really make much sense since the build have solution doesn't do any additional memory allocations while the string solution does. And going the rest down the chart, it all looks okay other than that. So although it looks like leak code's memory analysis might be slightly more precise, it's certainly not more accurate. And we can tell that here again, once again, with the data itself and with just a logical analysis of the algorithms. So basically in conclusion, should you be using these leak code metrics to inform your decisions on what good solutions are to your problems? Absolutely not, like not even close. You should be doing your own analysis, either you know empirically like the way I, I was doing it in this video, or you can kind of reason through why one solution might be better than the other. In the end of the day, I think these metrics here are just kind of for fun or to get people to spend a little more time on their site because in reality, they seem to be pretty meaningless. Cool, so anyways, I mentioned to some people that my next video would be on like a tutorial on how to get into programming, kind of from zero, and I still do plan on doing that, but I was just having too much fun dogging on leak code this week, so uh, next week, hopefully, I'll release that video. Uh, anyways, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something interesting, and please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon, comment, I appreciate all of those. They help the algorithm a little bit. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, one more thing. I also have a 200 sub special coming up since I hit 200 subs. I'm pretty happy about that. So look for that at some point later down the line. See ya.